Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Sam. And I'm Melissa. And I grew up in the FLDS community. It is a polygamous group run by Warren Jeffs, which I moved out of when I was 18 years old. I was raised LDS. Sam and I have been married for almost eight years now and have two beautiful babies together. And today we have our special guest, Manti. Hello everybody, how you doing? <laughs> yes, we're very excited to have Manti on here. He has some very interesting insight into the community, both in Colorado City and Hilldale, as well as the ranch in Texas. So. Very excited to talk to you a little bit more about that today. Yeah, everybody be ready. I know a couple weeks ago we kind of hinted at the fact that we were going to have Manti on as a guest. And so we're just so excited. Yeah. A lot of people have a lot of questions about the ranch. And Sam was never at the ranch. I was never righteous enough. He was enough. never righteous enough. And <laughs> so... that, means, that means you're better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not that at all. <laughs> so we were so excited hearing more of Manti's story and um, hopefully wanted to be able to give you guys some more insight on what it looked like to be called to the ranch, what the purpose of being called there was, and then what day to day life was like at the ranch. Yeah. And especially with all these documentaries coming out lately where a lot of yeah. people are talking about what happened at the ranch. I am like so excited to dive deep and find out more of like kind of the cross between these documentaries and what they were experiencing and what your experience was. So we'll probably do a little bit of comparison 100%. there as well. Yeah. So Yeah, and I don't have much insight into all of this. So, you know, people have asked me a lot and I, I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't have that much information. So that's why we're so excited to have someone that actually has the inside scoop. So Thank you. Yeah, so we're excited to have you here. Awesome. Well, I guess the first question is, where were you born and were you born into a polygamous family? How many siblings? So, uh, yeah, I was born in, uh, in up in Sandy, Utah. Okay. Up there at the Roland Jeffs little compound right there, um, right there by Cottonwood Park, I believe. Oh, or, or okay. is it Cottonwood Canyon? Cottonwood Canyon. I think it's at the mouth of Cottonwood Canyon. Canyon. Yes, right there. yes. For Sandy. Anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I was born up there and then uh, we lived there till I was about three years old. Okay. And then after that, we moved down to uh, Colorado City. We okay. lived. We originally lived out in a little trailer park there. Okay. And then my mom, she got taken away from the from my dad, which my dad was Seth Barlow. Okay. I don't know exactly what he did, but she was taken away from him, and it was like it was kind of the very first of the people being taken away. This is back in like 1996. Oh, and it wow. was kind of the trial run for everything that kind of went on after that. Exactly. So she was the one of the very first ones. So they took her away. Um, so and, and I'm sorry. So it was her that did something bad, or something? it was him. him. It was him. Um, so they kicked him out of the community. Yeah, I, I don't need, exactly, and I, okay. I don't even know exactly what he did. Okay. I, you know, it was something. I think he did something with another woman somewhere. Um, cause he was always living on the road. He lived in California most of the time. And then we just stayed home. We lived in like this little tiny trailer. Back then um, there might've actually been a reason instead of just power hungry. I, no, no, I think that's what it was. But okay. I think what, what it was is this was kind of a trial run for everything that happened. So it's like the mm. whole entire community knew about this. Yeah. Right. Can you, can you start separating families? Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, what we did is they, they took us away. We lived, and, and we actually moved back up to Roland Jeff's house for oh. a little while up in Salt Lake. Oh, interesting. Uh, okay. For a little while until he told my mom, he's like, look, you have to make a decision. You've got to go to a different man, right? Hmm. Um, so what, what happened with that is she went to uh, another guy which I'm, I'm probably going to leave him out of the story just yeah. so it doesn't get caught up in anything. Like, totally anyway, fine, yeah. So we... We got put into another family where uh, it was three other moms, I think. Okay. So did, for me, go ahead. Did your mom have a say in that though? You say that she went to a different family, but well, she was probably just assigned. Yeah, yeah. I think, well, what she told me is she said there was a couple people to choose from actually. Interesting. Oh, that's so, and, and that's this nice is, that she actually had some choice. Yeah. So anyway, she chose... I, th I, I believe she did choose the right person for, you know, for us. The situation, oh. yeah. Anyway, but what happened is she moved, you know, in with this other bigger family. It was all really new because she'd been, you know, the only wife. And then she turns into having all these other sister wives. And it, it was interesting for her. Like, she went through a lot. And, I bet. you know, I mean, even like, say, after a breakup or whatever, it was so interesting for her because she had 
uh, all these different emotions. You know, she's never oh, been yeah, through this. Yeah. And then now she has to make a decision where before all of her decisions were made for her. Mm -hmm. uh, that so, is so interesting. It, yeah. Anyway, so she, she gets placed by this other guy. Um, anyway, it's pretty interesting. She goes through all of this stuff for us. Uh, I don't remember any of it because I'm like three or four at the time. Mm -hmm. I have, uh, let's see, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five other siblings from from my mom and okay. dad. Okay. Uh -huh. And then she had another five siblings. From this other man. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I have ten. Full-blooded. Well, I have five full-blooded and then uh, five half. Oh, true. Half. And then five, and five half. half. Okay, yes. gotcha. So anyway, pretty interesting story there, though. Uh, yeah. Anyway, she, she moves over. And we, you know, we just start living, doing our thing. And, and this is just normal for me. Like I, so I remember as a kid, like I would always think, you know, when I, I always thought, you know, maybe my dad will come back and get me. Maybe he'll, mm -hmm. and I'm like three or whatever, mm -hmm. but he just, you know, he never did. We didn't, I didn't even know how he looked growing up because wow. it, he was like, you know, he's this bad person. Um, so I remember the first time I saw a picture of him, I snuck into my mom's uh, dresser. And it was like this big old dresser, and I remember like I'm climbing up to the top of it, and I'm <laughs> looking little. over, yeah, and 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 I'm looking in there, and I see her with this other guy. I'm like, who is this? Because mm -hmm. like, I didn't even, you know, yeah, no, by, by then, is. yeah, by then all my memories had been crushed down to where I didn't remember anything. Wow. Um, anyway, so I, I remember that that first time I actually saw him, it was like their their original wedding photos. Wow. So that was pretty interesting. To so see she that. so she kept those, which means that she must have still had some Good type one. of. Yeah, that uh, she. I, I I think it's like your first love. Like she always had something there for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, what you know for whatever reason and whatever happened, uh, she just you know she got Wasn't placed by this other yeah. guy. And I just remember her uh, talking about him and you know my dad, which you know I call him my dad, my stepdad. Yeah. He's he's the only dad that I really call a dad because he. He did really take good care of us. That's what I was going to say. So most of your memories growing up were with your stepfather. And then mm -hmm. how, many, so how many mothers did you say? There was your biological mother. And then um, he had how many other wives? By the time I left, I believe he had 11. 11 but, wives? Yeah, by the time I had left. So, so he was pretty high up in the church. You didn't you know, get you didn't was, get away with anything. Uh, no, not at all. A lot of eyes <laughs> on you. It's like if, if, if one mom out. says no, go ask another. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and you, sure and you had right. eleven different choices. Oh my, oh, my word! <laughs> it's like if you could get in the good graces of one mom, then you just go ask. So, her so about was there anything. was there a specific mom that would give you get, let you let, let you get away with more things? Oh, absolutely. Okay, <laughs> absolutely. It was, and that wasn't your mom. <laughs> it was not my. Oh, okay. My mom. We couldn't get anything past her. Yeah, but, uh, sounds familiar. I, my, my mom <laughs> was very strict. Yes, <laughs> we would we would always go to the other moms. So. Uh huh. Yeah. But we we did have a good childhood growing up, and and even this is like bringing back a lot of different memories where you know they're yeah. all kind of squished together. And yeah. So the, the timing will be off and all of that, but yeah. So you guys no were worries. in Sandy, mm -hmm. and then did you move back to Hilldale as that family, or did you guys stay in Northern Utah? No, so so we moved back to uh, Colorado City, and Arizona. then we lived there right right by the highway. Actually, we lived right by the the, the main highway that goes in and out of Colorado City. Mm -hmm. There, okay. So that's where most of my childhood memories are. Um, and then when we were when when I was thirteen, I remember we moved from uh, the the home we lived in. It just got too big. Like my my dad had too many wives right mm -hmm. so there was no longer enough room for them to all oh, live in the right. same spot so we ended up moving to another home which i don't know if you guys remember where the nephi barlow house was i do okay so we moved from our original home to that nephi barlow home. okay and then from there we lived there for one year and then from there we moved to the merrill jessup house so much movement yeah, yeah exactly that's a lot and then from there um like half of our our siblings that were, I, I believe all of the siblings that were under eight, just one night they says, okay, you guys are going. And they just disappeared. Like I remember we were all down, we were in this big room. Um, a couple of vans showed up. Uh, all of my siblings that were under eight years old, they says, okay, you guys are going into hiding, they called it. And it was like the the most emotional experience I've, I, I'd been through up to that time because, uh, 
I remember we were sitting there and they just says, okay, you're going. And we didn't know where they were going. They had no phones. We couldn't communicate with anyone. Did the mothers go with them? No. And that, that was what was interesting is, is only a couple of the moms went. And so then we're thinking, oh, I'm a really bad person because I didn't get called to go into hiding or whatever with these guys. And it was, it was emotional. It's like, I didn't get to share a childhood with those, with my siblings for a long time. How old were you when that happened? So I would have been about 14 at the time, I believe. Okay. So, yeah, I would have been about 14. Um, and you had no idea this was coming. It just yeah, we, we did. We had no idea at all. Um, and I just remember my mom had like a two-year-old daughter at the time, and she went as well. And your mom had to stay behind. Yeah. Oh. And it's like, it just, it's like your two, think of your two-year-old daughter getting ripped away. I mean... You, you know how it was, you know, you were there. So we yeah. all felt like that it was the right thing. We're like, oh, you know, she's going to be saved and, mm -hmm. and then I'm not. It's almost like you, you hear getting left behind a lot, right? right. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, and then we felt like we were all left behind. And ever since then, you know, it's just like what, what it did to me is I don't ever get attached to people anymore because I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll lose them in the snap of a finger. But someone and, can just take them away yeah, from you. exactly. And it's like... You felt like you no longer had power over your life. And from what I'm, from what I've seen, and you, tell me if this is your experience as well, the people that were, I, I guess, put in, taken away and put into hiding, mm -hmm. they, if they were told not to communicate with you, it was like you were no longer their family in a sense because they, they would just follow what the leaders told them to do, and that was that was the end of it. One hundred percent, and that that's exactly how it was. And I remember they told us, okay, you guys can start writing letters. So. That's what we would do, you know. We would we would start to write letters, and it was like this other foreign family that you didn't even know anymore. Mm -hmm. And every now and then they would send a picture back. It was it wasn't very often, but you know we would send pictures consistently, mm -hmm. and then write them letters consistently. We would write our dad letters because we didn't see our dad a lot. Um, but anyway, going back to where we were moving at the mm -hmm. time, so we went from there. We stayed in that Merrill Jessup house for. Quite a while, actually. I don't remember the time frame of that, but it was like a ghost town inside of there. Like it was really creepy uh, hmm. because it, you know you have all these children, this big family. All of a sudden, boom! It's split in half, and most of the people are gone. So, <clears throat> so how long was yeah. it until you knew that there was? Because them going into hiding was being taken to the ranch, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what we thought, but I, little did I know they weren't actually going to the ranch. They didn't. They so this, didn't go to the ranch. And, and we thought, oh, these guys are going to Zion. These guys yeah. are great people. You know, we're all bad. They're going to Zion. So how long did it take before you found out that they didn't get to go to this other place that was that you're not worthy of? Uh, so I think that it would have been almost two years before we saw them again. And all of a sudden one day, I'm, I'm like, I don't even remember the age I was. I think I was 14. I, I remember I went to work when I was 13. Mm -hmm. um, the first job I ever went to was uh, working for my dad down in Mesquite. Mm -hmm. um, he had a little batch plant down there. Anyway, so we went to work down there, and that we loved working. I mean, it's like we could get away from everything by going to work. That's what every boy's dream was. That, in that. was all I wanted to do. Is, yeah. is go to work because then it felt like we had a little bit of freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we went to work, and I'm, I'm down in Lake Havasu actually working, and I get this phone call and say, where are you? And it's my brother. I'm like you know I'm down here in Lake Havasu. And he's like, oh, well, we're, uh, we're going to see the family. We got called to go see the family, and you're not here. So I'm, just, I'm like, what? completely devastated and heartbroken. Like, and, you just weren't going to get to go. Yeah, because like, I wasn't, to yeah, because I wasn't there. And oh so gosh. then I'm, like, completely broken inside. I'm like, wow, I'm, how bad could I be that, that I'm just gone and I don't get to go? So, so anyway, the rest they go. Of, so at this point, the rest of your family goes to meet yeah. up with the family that had moved away a long time ago. Right. So they all go, and then we come back home, and then they come back home. I'm like, this is interesting, because then the same part of the family that went came back. Okay. So I'm like, uh, okay, where so where did you guys go? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, then they're like on their high and mighty horse. Oh, we went this, you know, we went somewhere, but we can't tell you. Okay. Because if you don't go, then they can't say anything. Mm. Oh but then it, it's like you're in there they're in a in a in a group and we're not in it you know it's right. like we're in the knowing group and you're not in that so you're left group. out was now. that the uh, the order right no or and the, this was before this was all back in uh let's see if i, I would have been 
I would have been 15 at the time. Yeah. This oh, was all this, this was, was all happening. Before. This was all this happening was, back when I was there. As yeah, well. when oh, he was wow. still there. So yeah. that's still way back in this park. Anyway, so then uh, a little bit later, I quit going to work because I'm like, oh, I'm gonna stay here so that I can be ready when I get called. Mm-hmm. So I stayed home, and I then I eventually did. They they called and we they took us. And I remember one of my brothers. We got in his truck and it has a camper shell, and we put this mattress in the back and. I just remember we got in the back of that mattress and there was like five or seven of us in the back and there was like this is this double cab truck and and there's just all of the rest of our family in there and then we have like this trailer and it has like a little bathroom that's framed inside of the trailer right so then we put all our, our our belongings in the back of the trailer and then it has like this little slider deal and then there's a bathroom inside there interesting oh my so word. you didn't have to stop at any of the gas stations when you was you know when you're wearing all of your plig clothes and and whatever they you know whatever yeah. you call them the long sleeve because oh, yeah. then you wouldn't be caught because if you pull off in this little cove off the side of the highway it, you have everything it's so interesting and i felt this way too when i was out there it seemed like everything started to become so secretive exactly and, and it's it, just like, nobody can see us we got to all be in hiding and it's just like it, it just started to feel so weird i was never asked to do anything or go anywhere mm-hmm. i just felt like i was some bad person that wasn't allowed to do any of this looking back now i'm very grateful i was never involved <laughs> but but it just seems so secretive and kind of weird and it, it was um and, and yeah i don't know how to explain it but it was like finally i had gotten called into the club I'm yeah. Like, yeah you know it's like i couldn't contain my excitement uh anyway so we or you know i just remember driving driving we'd fill up we'd fill up we'd drive and drive and i'd never been you know, out of the state, really. I mean, I'd, I've been to Arizona and Utah, mm-hmm. a few places like that. Um, but then we get to Colorado, and, you know, we drive out in this field somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and then, boom, there's a little house. And there's <laughs> not, all of our family. Not Texas. No, this They're wasn't Texas. Texas. Nope, not Texas. This was in, uh, this was on the outskirts of Pueblo, Colorado. Okay. Whoa. This was way out on some little county road out there. And they I, didn't tell you on the way, right? No, we didn't so know anything. So yeah, the so. people who are driving are the only people on need to know basis. Mm-hmm. All you guys know is that you need to be scared of what, like the police? Did yeah. They, like, and you don't go into gas stations because we're scared of exactly the so so the one person that would get out and fuel would would wear they would dress down they call it so they put on a t-shirt and a hat and all of that the and, lucky few that yeah. got to wear a normal t-shirt exactly <laughs> but it, it's pretty interesting because anyway we we go there and then what ended up happening is the rest of our family eventually moved out there to colorado Okay. And it was so it was such a small area that all the boys had to live outside in the b- little barn. And then we had like an outside shower and trailer. And I just remember we would get up and it'd be like negative degrees. You'd get up, you'd get out of the barn, walk over to the to the showers. And like we, this was all exciting for us. You know, we're like <laughs> 16 year old. I'm like, "Yeah, you know, we're we we went, you know, we're on this great mission. We're part of the group now." And I'm just loving it. And sometimes, like the the, it was all a, like a propane shower. Sometimes you'd run out of propane, and you'd have these icy showers at oh. four o'clock in the oh morning when Lord. it's negative degrees. I just remember, and they're about to die. But it's I loved it. You know, I, I felt like I was part of something at the yep. time, yep. And, and I just felt like I was you know so involved. Yeah, feeling like you have purpose is and that, huge that's all that matters. Exactly. That's Everybody all that matters because to feel like they have a purpose. That, that's the way we were raised. Yeah. This is our this is what our whole purpose in life is to do what the prophet says. 100%. And that, that's how it felt. So from there uh, I got called to go to work again. So anyway, I go back to work. Uh, I, I go now to Now in Colorado. No, so I'm in Colorado and then I go back to Lake Havasu to work. Oh, oh wow. So this because is we needed already. money, yeah. Okay. okay. So then I'm I'm working in Lake Havasu and then from there we went to Rio Doso. And then from from let's see, I'm trying to get my all my stories straight because it, there's so Your many friend, I was going to say that's so many movements that to be able to keep track of them at all is amazing and we do not blame you when yeah. something gets mixed up because so, that's a lot. To, yeah. During as a child. during the time of the the raid, all of a sudden, going back to that to when I very first heard about it was in probably two thousand and five or six. I don't remember exactly when it was. When the raid happened in Texas. No, this was before. Oh, okay. so this is the first time because we knew about Zion, right? Because all of a sudden, like one of my my oldest brother all of a sudden disappeared one day, mm-hmm. and then a little while later, my oldest sister disappeared. 
those were anyway. the things I experienced. Yeah. I, I, it's just it's all nothing. of a sudden, all of a sudden they're gone and they're, mm-hmm. and, and that you wonder where they are and people won't tell you anything and you're just like, okay. Yeah. They're just <laughs> nothing. Did in. they disappear from Colorado? Or no, no. Disappear? This was, so this was way before. So oh, I'm, okay. I'm messing up the timeline. No, no, here. you're fine. And, and we go clear back to where we're living in this original house in, in Colorado uh, City. In Colorado City. Okay. Mm-hmm. So people had disappeared there. Yeah. And they've just were gone. You didn't even, they mm-hmm. never went to Colorado or anything. No, they so, were just gone. And, and these people actually did go to the ranch. Oh, okay. And we didn't know that, you know, they just disappeared one day. And every now and then, all of a sudden, you'd get a phone call at like two in the morning and it'd be our brother. So we'd all wake up and, like, ah. and, and going back to that, our dad would call at a certain time. So by then, our dad was sort of in hiding, right? Mm-hmm. He wasn't around. Um, and I just remember everyone, we'd be waiting around the phones. We'd have these landlines. And uh, if you could answer the phone fast enough, you could talk to our dad, right? Oh. And then there'd be big old lines of people waiting to talk to him and... And it was, wow. it was, it was pretty interesting because I went and found the phone jack that rang the first and then I would plug my phone in and then we'd <gasps> seriously, like, we'd all be sleeping there. Yeah. We'd all be sleeping there by the phones and you'd first you pick it up. Hello, you know? Um, wow. and then all of a sudden, I don't know if you've lived in those big houses where they had like all the different extensions. You remember that? Oh, yeah, I do. So then you would dial the extension to all the rooms to try to figure out which room had the call. Because uh-huh. your phone would go off that fast. And then all of a sudden you'd hear all of everyone's phones ringing to, so everyone try could figure out, out who, who had the phone call. Because it would in, ring busy. In your house, yeah. you could, pick, could you pick up any phone and listen into no, it? No, this was, this was after that, where they had fixed all that. Okay, so see, was, they never fixed that on my house, apparently, because you could always pick it up and listen to it. Uh. No, so you always had to dial 9 when you were calling out. Okay. So it would lock the line in. But Maybe they fixed it eventually in my but, house. But uh, no, you could do multiple calls at this mm-hmm. time. But it was just funny because you could call each room in the house as well. So I just remember, you know, you'd jump on and you'd call all the different rooms and you'd find out which one had a busy signal and then you'd go to that room and that's who was on That's who was on the line. And by the time you got there at such a big house, you know, you'd run over there. By the time you got there, it was like, yeah, just big old line and you're like, oh. People waiting to try to talk. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to ask ask him anything. And it's like we had to ask him if we wanted to go, like say we wanted to go to work with our friend or Oh, so he was still giving permission for all that. Yeah, so we still had... We'd ask our moms, but they're like, oh, we don't have the authority to give you that permission. Mm, sounds, gotcha. sounds familiar. So, That's and, and we were 14, 15 at the time, right. too. Yeah. So. Still, still young kids. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. But going back to, I don't, I, we kind of got off track oh, here. Oh, yeah, so no, you're good. Going back to after the, during the time of the raid, I was yeah. actually in Mesquite, Nevada. And that's when I very first, or going back to when I very first heard about the, the ranch itself was someone brought a newspaper and I wouldn't even look at it. I'm like, oh, I'm not supposed to know. So I can't look at it. I can't even, because oh, there wow. was a newspaper saying something about Texas. Mm-hmm. And that was what sparked it inside of me. I'm like, oh, so that's must, that, that must be, must where, be where the, yeah, where the ranch, where Zion is. So that kind of got my brain thinking a little bit. But then after that, I didn't hear anything about it until the raid. Mm-hmm. So I was down in, in, right out of Mesquite, Nevada, we had this little house. I was working for my uncle at the time. And we get a call saying, oh, look, look at the news. So this was back when we could still look at the internet. So in, in about 2010, I think is when they told us we could no longer look at the internet. Well, you must have had internet for business purposes We then. did. Okay, see, because uh, I was never allowed to have internet because I guess for what the kind of work I did, the companies I worked for, we didn't need the internet. Yeah. So, or at least not, that I would had any access to, so I never got the internet. Yeah, one and and we had internet like at our scale houses and things like that for our mm. office and things gotcha. like that. Gotcha. Okay. But I never could get on it. Like my brother had ruined it for me already because he got on the internet and watched whatever he watched, you mm-hmm. know, oh. and kind of ruined it for us to where our dad wouldn't let us have computers. So growing mm. up, I didn't have a computer. Um, I got my first computer way later on in life i think when i was 18 or 19 okay. and i had went and bought one just kind of being rebellious like, <laughs> a little bit and snuck so, it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. and i didn't even know what to do with it i had it i didn't i never You're connected like, I to the internet it. but it's like one. oh i have a computer I'm i have no so idea awesome. what this does but i got it <laughs> yeah, like, that's exactly how it was i wave at everybody i have a computer you know yeah. but it was it, it didn't do me any good you know right. i think i put some pictures on it or something uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. and the, and then i like i I don't know if you remember the old iPods. Oh yeah, but we could we could connect our iPods to those and we could download all the devotionals and 
all of that stuff and we could only have certain songs which you know that oh yes and that's yeah. i think what i got my computer for i'm like oh i'm so cool you know i can download songs onto my iPod. onto my ipod oh, yes. now so <laughs> it was a it was a pretty big deal to ha have an ipod it was there. yeah even having an ipod you're like oh i'm way up on my hor high horse because yep. back then what were they 250 bucks to buy probably about and, that yes. expensive and we were giving all of our money to the church because of you know we're like oh we got to build zion or whatever yep. so and you were told to give your money to the church yeah. <laughs> that is so yeah. true yeah but going back to when the radex happened i just i don't remember the initial of where i heard it from mm -hmm. but i just remember as it was happening so i did have a mom that was living down there at the time oh, wow. had a couple of our siblings and they yeah they had gotten taken away with all of that so i just remember being down there we would watch the news we would try to coordinate things so i was living with uh, a lot of my dad's um a lot of my dad's siblings so my okay aunts like and uncles aunt, okay yeah. interesting and a lot of them moved back so all of the older people moved out and we would have to help them. We'd kind of coordinate where they would go. There would be a bunch that would come and live at our house. Oh, wow. And so all of a sudden that big empty house got full again. So that was that was pretty awesome because that was like a ghost town inside of there before. And I just live in any room that I wanted. Yeah. Because yeah. it was basically, for a time, it was basically just you, there, right? There was like five or six of us. There. Okay. There was like my mom. There was a couple other moms, a couple of their kids. And it was like probably seven or eight people that just lived in wow. the house consistently wow so but, those houses are huge as oh i think this many of you like probably know 20 bedrooms or something uh -huh. and it was it was scary going down into the downstairs sometimes you'd go down there and it was really creepy yeah <laughs> like, I bet. it was it was scary going down in there oh man uh, but anyway going back to to you know not to get off topic of, oh, of when i when i first heard about the ranch so i hear about the ranch we help coordinate a lot of things and then from there it kind of died down a little bit. So I don't think I went, I don't remember the exact date. Do you remember the exact date of it? Of when the, the raid, when, when, yeah, when, when the it, officials oh. came in and, and split up the families yeah. and took the women and children, all of that. I don't remember the exact date, but it was not too long after I had moved. The, okay. the raid happened right after I moved out of the community. How, how did that make you feel though? Like, did you feel like that you was missing out on something? It, it not, not necessarily. See, at that point I was kind of, I mean, I was heartbroken to see some of these pictures that I was seeing and to see mm -hmm. what was happening to these families. And I knew a lot of these families, at least knew of them. Right. Um, I had some siblings that were involved as well, you know, and of course they haven't talked to me about it even to this day because that's, you know, it's, it was just kind of super secretive. And so, but for me, I, I remember hearing about it. It wasn't too long after I moved out, but it was kind of a similar feeling to when Warren Jeffs was caught and sent to prison. It was mm -hmm. just like I can't believe this is happening because we were taught our entire lives, taught our entire lives that it could never happen to God's people, right? Because He would protect them. So it, to, for, to me, it was kind of a letdown. Like oh, I can't believe this is happening, right? Uh, and and it kind of made me realize, or, or I guess question everything that because this was so recent after I'd moved out, I still thought that there might be some truth to it. Yeah. Well, and, and even for me, it was like that up until like not even very long ago where I started actually questioning it mm -hmm. um, because it was so ingrained into me. Oh, yes. You know, I was there till I was 23. And I, I think I left when I was 23. Wow, you stuck it out so longer than I, I did. I did. And, and, <laughs> but anyway, so it, it does. It gets, it, it, yeah. you get sucked into it so hard that you don't even realize it because you won't go seek out the information for yourself. Correct. Yeah. Well, and when you're told your whole life that, you know, the information is all of the devil and working against 100%. God's good, you know, you know, that's, it's hard to be willing to look. And I see, you know, a lot of times people, and we try to say this over and over and over on this channel that it's so easy to say, how could those people do it? How could those women do this? How could they do that? How could they go along with this or that and the other? And it's just not as hard as what you would think when you've been raised in it. How mm -hmm. could you know any different? Right. How 100%. Could you, how could you know any better than that? And especially when you're cut off from information, I feel like that's the biggest thing you can do. Like if you're cut off from the information telling you or you're told that all the information is lies, even when you do see it, mm -hmm. then yep. how could you think any differently, really? True. That, that's very true. And that's how it was growing up. You know, we we pretty much what what we were told in even school was all you can listen to is the prophet's words you cannot 
take any information from anywhere else. So automatically, our brain blocks all that other stuff out. Automatically, right. like we're just. Well, and we assume that it's evil and, and wrong and that fabricated and anything that's not coming directly from the prophet, we were taught to believe that it was just false information. Exactly, exactly. Like even in any world history, like I, I remember hearing a little bit, I, I love stories. Mm -hmm. so I remember hearing a little bit about world history and stuff and it was so intriguing, but then we were told the only history of when Zion gets redeemed is going to be the priesthood history versus mm -hmm. the world. So the world history, you don't need to learn that. Yeah, it's so not, not important. important. It, it's not. And, and so then automatically it's like in my brain, I'm like, oh, okay, that's, that's disinformation or whatever. You know, I, yeah. don't, I don't need to learn that. Oh. All I need to learn is, is what I'm being taught. Here. And even the church history that they would talk about would like they would only teach us the parts of church history they wanted us to know. One hundred percent. They wouldn't tell us some of these things that we know now. Yeah. That would make you turn your head and wonder, hey, wait, what, what happened? Right. So anyway, it was very, it was very filtered, and we were only hearing what they wanted us to hear, and 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 it just made us believe a hundred percent that that what they were doing was the right thing to do. Well, and like they would tell us all the time, you were being raised as a calf in the stall. That's that's the literal term they would use. Hmm. And but it's like, I feel like all we're doing is being programmed for something. Yeah. Which you know, there's there's a lot of techniques for that. But hmm. anyway, that's not really a compliment to be raised like a calf in a stall. Not not really. <laughs> uh, you don't get to experience a lot of life and and. I, I did enjoy growing up. You know, you had the big families. We had, you know, we had our soccer teams on with our family, big backyards, and, right. and it was great. Like life was really, really great uh, mm -hmm. until all of that started changing. Correct. And then once all of that started changing, then it's like it all kind of the facade behind what was going on kind of broke off, and you could actually see what was going right. on, mm -hmm. and and that broke a lot of people, and it yeah. turned a lot of people really sour, and you know, it a lot of people got into suicide and a lot of things like that yeah um, which I'm sure you guys have talked a little bit about that on your channel before. we have and we've heard a lot of stories and that so it's yeah it's sad yeah it's heartbreaking that yeah but when everything that you believe every single thing that you believe in your life is taken away from you it's yeah soul crushing it, it is and and even for I don't know how you felt when you first left but it was like it, it's like it was the hardest decision I had ever made in my entire life like even me still thinking back on, I'm like, how did I even get out of that? Because you had everybody that you loved working against you. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, at a drop of the hat, you were no longer part of anything. Your yep. whole identity was caught up in that, and now you have zero identity. You have nothing. Yep, and you have to start from zero and figure out what... Life means, what everything You don't means. really have experience in life because you were forced to do a certain thing your entire mm -hmm. life and, and and you just kind of followed orders right what, what was interesting about it is it didn't feel like force and i don't know how it was in your in your household 100 percent, it didn't feel like force for but me it, either it was like your dad, would, your dad would look at you and you're like oh i did something wrong you know yeah. and, and so then you're like oh all i want to do is please him all i want to live for is for him and that that's all you lived for it really was mm -hmm. yeah no and having that yeah. making it feel like a choice until you're out you don't realize mm -hmm. that that's its own tactic right like yeah. being able to convince people that well you're still getting to choose it you still have your agency sometimes when people say that, that it always gets under my skin a little yeah. bit it's like well you still have your agency and it's like yes but if you're telling me there's consequences for if i don't do exactly this this and this mm -hmm. but i have the agency to go against everything that I've been taught and then I have to deal with all these consequences that are yeah. set out in front of me. Is that truly agency? It, and when you're a child, I would dare say it's absolutely not agency. No, no, not at all. You know, no. not with the amount of the, the guilt and the shame and but, all the things that you're told as a kid. And as you become an adult, sure, you get a little bit more agency, but still in the back of your mind, you're like, but if I don't, I know they've told me this, 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 and this, and this are gonna happen to me. Uh -huh. It's still so scary that yeah. And, and that's what it felt like is, I don't know how it was in your household because uh, an interesting fact though about your house is uh -oh. it used to be my grandpa's. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. anyway, if, if the viewers ever want to look that up. <laughs> my, my, no, it's true. We, my we... Uh, grandpa from my mom's side was Gerald Steed. Okay. And oh, you yep. guys... So we, it's Steed's house. Yeah. It was interesting. It was, it was uh, so he passed away and, and shortly after that, his family was kind of split up and who knows what. Um, and unfortunately, I don't know that they... 
I mean, it seems like they were kind of split up a lot, the different they, mothers they were, and yeah. the different pieces of the family. And, mm-hmm. and then because of that, we were told to move across the street and into this new house, which awesome house. They, they barely, ha- I, I just remember, like, I'm like, it's they tiny just little kid. They had just it. finished it. Brand and, new, very nice. And, like, my, my grandpa was, like, the most awesome person in the world. Uh-huh. You talk to anyone, he was, like, the best person in the world. Probably one of the first houses to have solar panels on the roof. Really? Like, it, I didn't it, it know was that. A, it was a, I mean, they were, it was way back in the day, so they yeah. were the, the big, thick, bulky bricks, you I'm, know. Uh, interestingly enough about that is I remember them putting those on. Uh-huh. And I had I seen pictures of me out there, you know, with with my other nephews and all that. And I didn't even realize that's what those were. Yes, big I solar panels. <laughs> big they, solar. They're like these big old boxes. They were huge. Yes. <laughs> Not, of, nothing like they so are today. That's so interesting. Yeah. Wow. One of the Steed daughters actually, if you're listening to this one, I'm sorry that I don't remember your name or your handle on the um on YouTube, but she had commented saying that she was living in that house and that when that happened and your family she was moved involved in, in all of that. she was like, yeah, we had to move out and we had just moved in. And that as a little kid, it was like, what's happening, you know? And oh, I just felt my heart so fell for her as yeah. she was saying, but she was like, that was me that you kicked out. And we're like, so <laughs> sorry. It wasn't really house. him, yeah. but you know, but like. It just goes to show that uh, the, the peep, the families out there have no control. They had no control. I mean, when, when, when the leaders say, hey, this is what you're doing. You're moving over here now. The half of your family is going here and you're split up now. I mean, it, everyone just said, okay. I mean, that's what we, that's what we're doing. Right. right. So it was, it just showed the amount of control that leaders had over the families. And it, it was. It was like that that fear tactic, though, that, that you were talking about a little bit. Um, yeah. Me growing up, it was always like, you're going to be left behind if you're not a good person. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I was in my, I was pre-teens, before I had turned into a, to a teenager, I remember I was such a... I was a little shit when I was growing up. <laughs> so I couldn't live with any of the other kids, so I actually moved into the laundry room by myself as a kid growing up. Wow. I remember in grade school and there was like weird shadows on the walls and the laundry, you know, the washers over there making all this racket. And and there was such deep fear inside of me that I would I would cry at night sometimes. Like, yeah. oh, and just think my heart. I'm such a bad person. I can't I can't live with any of the other kids. I have to live by myself, mm-hmm. you know, and it would just, it was such fear inside of me that I didn't sleep a lot of times. How old were you when that happened? I would probably be 11 or 12 at this time. Wow. And that's, that's, that's tough. so sad. It was, it was interesting though. And, 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 you know, there's so many kids and they're trying to keep them separate because they cause all this trouble and all that. So uh-huh. in, in even like my mom's room was like, you know, right down the hall. It's not like I was separated from everything, but it felt like I was. It felt like I was a complete well, separate kid or entity from everything that was going on. I can understand having to live in a laundry room would make you feel that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it wasn't a small laundry room, though. It was like a big old room. And as right. a little kid, living in a huge room is scary. Yeah, mm. but the isolation. It, There's it, a reason why in prison, when they put people in solitary, mm-hmm. it does things to people, right? Like right. being in solitary and being told, like, you can't be with them. Like, that causes... You know, distress for sure. Right. And, and and I don't like, I take my hat off to my parents for, you know, even for dealing with me through all of this as well. Because they had all these other children that they were dealing with. You know, most of us were like a year apart. Like me and my older brother are a year and two months apart. Wow. And so like my mom has so many kids and she's like, oh, you know, I can't deal with this many. I can't deal with all of the yeah. the stuff that's going on. So. I'll put you over here for a little while, and hopefully you can cool down. So they were just nervous, or I, they there were, I guess, fights and things between oh, you and your siblings, oh, yeah. and so they were just trying to protect the children and then kind of separate you for that yeah. reason. Was that the yeah? Oh, okay. And and I was a I was a big kid growing up too. So when all the other, even the kids my same age would fight with me, I would always win, and I would end up hurting them. Okay. And I didn't even realize that, but it's like one of the kids I remember we had we were out hoeing weeds. And he hit me on the head with his hoe. I'm like, I don't, I don't even remember what we got into this fight. And I had a really sharp hoe. And I just whacked him in the head. And I remember it cut him. And then I felt really, really bad. Oh. And it was just things like that where, you know, we were little kids. But we, you know, we could do some damage that's a, too. That's a, lot of, that's a lot of kids to try to wrangle as well. I mean, even <laughs> well, with 11 mothers, that's yeah. still. They, they didn't teach you to turn the other cheek when you get whacked in the <laughs> no, head. No. I, well, that was not my philo- <laughs> philosophy growing up. <laughs> But it was just things like that where it's like, you know, you'd get into trouble and I remember not being able to play with a lot of the other kids because I was 
too rambunctious and I would just had so much energy and I didn't know what to do with it, you know? Yeah. And I couldn't sit still, like even through school, through church and all mm. of that. Like I, I can't sit still when it comes to that. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So, but, so really fast because you're talking about the separating and having to live in a different room and all that. I was just curious because in, in different families, it was a little bit different, but in your family, did it feel like there was this sense of wanting to separate the mother's children? like some some they didn't want you to mingle with some of the other mother's children and kind of separate yourselves at all i i wouldn't say in our family it was never like that okay good. it never was good. so i was actually really happy for that um, mm -hmm. there was some of the children the older ones than me that that felt like they were better i guess okay you know we're the, the we're, yeah yeah yeah. Okay. yeah so there was difference between that where like there was this one certain person that would always tell on me Oh, and, okay. and it's like almost she had it out for me a little bit. Uh -huh. And so, but you know, it, it's, it's what kids do. It's, yeah, it's what siblings. That, that and siblings. When you have so many siblings, you know, you're bound to have a lot of different types of personalities siblings? and things. How many I, siblings did you have? To be honest, I, I don't say, even like, know. I, but I, I believe exactly in, the, in the whole household, including the moms and dad, I believe there was 63 of us. All together. Oh my word! You, I mean, you, you beat me by a lot. So that's... I don't know if that's a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we had our own tribe and everything. And, oh yeah. And we would, you know, we'd go play sports. We'd play all that. You know, it, it yeah. was a lot of fun growing up. But also, we were very enclosed into our own community. Where mm -hmm. even even in our own community uh, community, we couldn't socialize. Oh, right. So, so socialization was a very very frowned upon thing. your family with other families right yeah yep. so we didn't we couldn't you know later on down the road we could do picnics but it was only our family uh -huh. we couldn't go out and do any of the the rides or anything like that where we'd go drive up through the canyons or go camping that we did earlier in our life mm -hmm. we no longer could do that kind of stuff yeah. so it, it was interesting you know yeah it seemed like years and years ago when i was just a very young kid, uh, socializing with other families was okay. Yeah. And then as time got, when I became a teenager, all of a sudden, I mean, even the neighbors, you know, we would try to go say hi to the neighbor kids. If their dad saw us or if our dad caught us, we were in big trouble. Yeah. Like you were not allowed to even talk to your neighbors. And then like we had all these big fences up to hold, I don't even think it was to hold us hold everybody out but it more to hold us in. Mm -hmm. And like that, you couldn't, you know, you'd go over and try to talk to the neighbor kids then either they would get mad or our dads and, and moms would get mad at us. Did they ever give you a reason for not socializing? What was what was what were you taught about that? They told us it's because we were supposed to stay focused on what we were supposed to be doing. So okay. what our focus was was, you know, getting better so that we could go to Zion. Mm -hmm. Uh hoeing hoeing our weeds, you know, working, trying to make us better mm -hmm. but what it felt like is we were just so cramped and crammed in the, that we couldn't do anything and and it really uh, limited a lot of the imagination and things yep. like that yeah the vibe i got was and it's interesting it seems like it was different for every family but the vibe i got was the there was the leaders the prophet the the bishops teaching the teachings right mm -hmm. but then every family was a little bit different every family would would, would take those teachings and tweak it to their own benefit and then they didn't want other families or other children from other families to come and influence what they were trying to do with their own family. And that's why they didn't want you to socialize with these other families. They didn't that's, want you guys comparing. Yeah, those. that's like, exactly. Well, my I, father I, says this about that. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly, I think, what it was is because, you know, they were like, oh, these guys are a bad influence on you. And, mm -hmm. and you're supposed to be, you know, because our dad was pretty high up in the church. Right. So you guys are supposed to be this model family and be perfect. And a lot of people thought that we were, but... You know how all the families worked. We, we were definitely not perfect at oh, yeah. all. No. Nope. But I, I think we did get off topic on, on, oh, on no, all the fine. places hey, we were moving. It's yeah, perfectly fine. So fun. anyway, so I, I, you know, we hear about the raid, all that stuff. Um, and then it was a couple months later. I think it was in the summertime when the raid happened. By the time winter rolled around, I had moved to Riodoso and we were working there. And then from there, all of a sudden, we, we everyone knows where the ranch is now. Right. So then we go to a little town in called Sonora, and I, I think we brought something back. We got done with our job. We were bringing something back, and we dropped it in Sonora, uh, and we were just hanging out there. I just remember being in a motel room for a 
couple days and then it just turned into a couple more days and we were just hanging out there for like a week and I was like this is interesting because there's a TV in there and yeah. we're watching TV and we're just having this blast it's me and two of my brothers you know uh -huh. and we're walk we walk across the road to McDonald's and stuff and we're like you know this is fun this is I can this do this is, this is pretty <laughs> fun you know who was, who was calling the shots like who was I have no clue so, so was someone talking to one of your brothers or were you probably like... I don't even know because I know what the one one of the brothers that were with us had gone to the ranch at one time Mm -hmm. Okay. And then so you guys he came back. So then, waiting for the next shot. To yeah, be we had no clue what was going on. Our dad was at the ranch at this time, though. Okay. okay. And then, all of a sudden, one day we get a call. Hey, you guys come, come to the ranch. And we're like, oh, this is awesome, you know. Yeah. You're so like... we jump in the truck and we head in there. And I just remember feeling like, oh, you know, I I finally been called. Mm -hmm.